Hello and welcome to this PS Trace tutorial video. Today I would like to talk about the analytical mode and that is a mode of PS Trace that allows you to calculate the results from a standard addition method or by using a calibration curves in an automated way so that you can easily get to your results without all these small calculations where you can easily make a mistake. Let's have a look at PS Trace to find out how to do this. So already loaded some curves, but first let's find out how do we switch the mode in PS Trace. Well, most people use the scientific mode, which is this little uh, gold icon, and that is the mode that allows you to, well, basically use all the functions that are there. The analytical mode is a mode that helps to use it for standard additions or for making calibration curves and then using the calibration curves to calculate from your sample the concentration. The last one is the corrosion mode, which is a mode that's especially helpful for people who want to perform TAFL analysis. There will be a separate video for that. Okay, so let's switch to the analytical mode. And two things happen when you switch to the analytical mode. You have a new tab here and you have another new tab here. Another thing that happens is you have less techniques available. So we only put techniques there that allow you to get peaks and using these peaks then to do your calculations and I, you will see that in a minute. First of all, you have in your method editor now a new tab, which is this analysis tab, allows you before you perform the measurements to set all the parameters for your standard addition or calibration curve. Let's just walk through the parameters. First you choose, do you want to perform a standard addition or do you want to use a calibration curve? Well, what's the difference between the two? A calibration curve means that you make measurements with standard solutions where you know exactly the concentrations and you plot the signal you get versus the concentrations. And then you use this curve to do the reverse. So to calculate from signals you get from unknown solutions, the concentrations of these solutions. So that is the calibration. The other option is the standard addition. And standard addition is also very popular in analytical chemistry, especially of complex media. So let's say you take a river water sample for, um, yeah, as an example, you take a river water sample. And there you want to determine the heavy metals. How you would do that is you first measure just your river water sample, then you add a known amount of a standard solution of metal ions you're interested in. You measure again, you add again more standard, you measure again, etc. And from that you can calculate the original concentration in your solution. And the nice thing is, if there is something in that sample, like in this river water, that influences the sensitivity of the measurement of that metal ion, it influences that for all the steps of the measurement. So this is when standard addition is very popular, when you're not sure if your sample medium, if that influences your sensitivity. So that's the choice between calibration and standard addition. Then the next choices you have is actually determining what type of solutions you're going to use in your measurements. You can set the settings to that you just have fixed concentrations in the cell and you would choose the concentration unit here. So you can choose different units, for example ppm, but also something like milligram per liter or millimolar, for example, is possible. Okay, concentrations in cell, as I said, now you would just enter the different concentrations for all the different measurements you do. So for your standard one measurement, you would know that you have 50 ppm concentration of copper, for example, which I have added here. If you want to change analytes, then you can do that by, you need to double click it. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so you can change the name to something else if you want it. When you're done, you just press enter. And this way you can also add a new analyte, a new, and then you unlock the full column. Right, but now we don't want this, so we just empty this one and the column is blocked again. That's when you know the concentrations. The other option is you want to tell the software how much microliters of standard solution you have added to your system. So 
the usual combinations are with standard addition method, you use the added volumes in microliters, and with a calibration curve, you most likely use concentration in cell, because then you have standard solutions with the fixed concentrations, and for standard addition, you have unknown concentration and you add known concentrations. Okay, the next uh, line tells you if you use the same or different solutions. That means, for example, do you have a mixed copper um, lat uh, standard solution or do you have three different solutions? One for copper, one for lat and one for cadmium. So, for example, if I had a mixed copper lat solution, I would change this one here to a one. And that means both of these solutions come from, well, both are the same solution. They're both solution number one. And that also means that now the concentration of the, well, you can change the concentration of the solution for this corresponding analyte, but of course you can only add the same amount of volume of the same solution. So here you determine are these different solutions or are these the same solutions, then they have the same number. Then you add the concentration again in the unit that you've chosen here of your standard solution and then you determine for each of the steps how much volume you added of the corresponding solution. So let's say for my first standard measurement I added one milliliter of the copper solution and 100 microliters of the cadmium solution. That's how you fill in this table. Then we have the sample volume, that means that's the original amount of sample that you put into your electrochemical cell. Usually these are then uh, diluted. The result of the dilution is what you put into cell volume. So let's say we put one milliliter of river water in our electrochemical cell and then we filled it up with our measurement buffer to 10 milliliters. Then I would enter here one milliliter and 10 milliliter. Let's say I put completely unmodified only my river water in the cell and I, then I would put 10 milliliters in my cell and I would write 10 milliliters in both of these. The last window helps you to determine how to evaluate your signal. What you do is, is for each of the different analytes, you put here where you roughly expect the peak and then you can say I want auto search for the peak. The auto search will happen within the window that you have defined here. So the copper peak can deviate a maximum of 150 millivolts before the software will not find it anymore. Another option if your peaks are not easily found is to just set them to remove the checkbox from auto and then you put in manual borders for your peak and it will look for the highest point between these two values that you put there. So once you've set up this complete table you've already done like most of the hard work. Now let's go to your measurements. For your measurements, well let's say you do a standard addition method so you first measure your sample. Um, then you need to tell the software that this was your sample and there are two ways of doing this. Either you do this before the measurement and then you just set it here to sample or maybe to your standard measurements that you're doing or you can do it after the measurement. You just go to the curve and then you choose what the status is and there will be a little label after this one. For the standards you do the same. So the sample is your first measurement then when for the first time you have added your standard solution you would label it with standard one and when the second time you've added your standard solution you would add standard two. Right, because I've like changed a bit the data around I will just load the same file again just to make sure that all these values jump back to where they were. Because when you save your, in the analytical mode, your measurement in your PS session file, you will not only have your methods and your curves, but also all this information from the analysis tab is in there. So once you've done all the hard work, so setting this table and assigning to the curves the different functions, you can go to the analytical result tab. Here you get a lot of summary for all your different analytes. So first, we have to find the peaks that we want to analyze. So I just make it easy for me, I auto detect the peaks and now I found the different peaks and if I refresh the curves by recalculating I will also see in the regular plot that the different peaks have been assigned 
to the different analytes that I have named before in the table. So now here we see an overview of the results. So one thing we see is again the, the things that we see already in the method editor. So here is our table that we filled in. Here are the settings for finding our signal. And if you want now to change something, so after the measurement, you could just change it in here and then recalculate. Then if we scroll down, we now see for each analyte, the curve that was made for the standard edition, we see where the different points are, right? First our sample point, then our two uh, standard editions, and how the value of the sample, how the real concentration of the sample was extrapolated, right? You see also all these values here, and by dechecking these boxes and then recalculating, um, you can also remove points from a measurement. Maybe you have like multiple standards and one of them looks really odd and then you think like, okay, I just remove that one, for example. You can of course copy paste the values from like one table by just pushing the button to the clipboard. But what's most likely what people like to do is they like this overview where you see for each analyte what the concentration in the sample is, what the concentration in the cell was, and then you get the information about the uh, linear regression you made for your standard edition. You get the R square to tell you about the quality of your measurement and you get the slope, which, yeah, which tells you about the sensitivity. As I said, every time you change something, just press recalculate. And uh, if you want this data to have for your lab book somewhere else, you can just press this button to copy everything to clipboard or use the print button to actually make Oh, can I, yeah, there, to make like a small report that you could just print and have it then already available. Okay, this is everything that I want to tell you about the analytical mode for today. I think this is already plenty. Of course, feel free to explore the other options that are in the analytical mode. And if you found this video helpful, there are more videos like that on our YouTube channel. So if you subscribe, you won't miss any of these. If you follow us on LinkedIn, you also won't miss our updates, where, for example, we post when we have no videos. So thanks for watching and have a great day.